everybody, welcome back to another episode of Goodreads. So in the last Goodreads episode, we talked about Osborne waves. They're most commonly seen in hypothermia. And we also talked at the end a little bit about some other mimics. And I wanted to kind of caveat to that because one of the mimics of Osborne waves was hyper or high levels of serum calcium. So in this example, we're going to start with a 61-year-old male with acute pancreatitis. And I want you to go through your normal rate, rhythm, axis, intervals, or whatever methodology you use to go through 12 leads. But I want to focus on the intervals portion of this, and we're going to zoom in a little bit. And I want to discuss this QT interval. And so the general rule of thumb, without looking exactly at the QTC interval, is that if you take an R to R interval and the S or the T wave ends up being at or beyond the halfway point between the R to R intervals, that's kind of a ballpark way of saying that, yes, the QT interval is long. But what I want you guys to notice about this specific portion is that it's actually the ST segment that's kind of pulled out with a normal size looking T wave. And this is important because this is going to delineate exactly which electrolyte is off and specifically if it's high or low. So in this situation, it is hypocalcemia. So in evidence of hypocalcemia, normal values, 9 to 11 typically, and sometimes different lab values have different numbers. But in hypocalcemia, you're going to get a prolonged QT interval. And we know that is low calcium because that ST segment, as you can see here, is actually pushed. That's the prolonged portion with a normal sized T wave. So here's another example hypocalcemia, you can see this prolonged ST segment and then a normal sized T wave, prolonged ST segment and a normal sized T wave. This is one of the cool things about the 12 liter. We can look at a lot more than just cardiac ischemia. We can see exactly which electrolyte is being affected, whether it's high or it's low. And one other thing to consider is that oftentimes hypokalemia and hypocalcemia are often interchanged, but just remember both present with a long QT, but the different portions of the QT interval are long. So in hypokalemia, you actually have a full stretch QT interval. You have the T wave itself that actually gets stretched out and you have a, a U wave with hypokalemia and then counter that to hypocalcemia, you have ST prolongation is the cause of the prolonged QT interval with a normal size T wave.